Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to delete records from your table using a delete query in Microsoft Access. Now, a delete query is the most dangerous of all of the action queries, right? Your make table, your app pen, your, your update queries. Delete's the most dangerous because you can wipe out data. So, before continuing, back up your data. You should be backing up every night as it is, right? And anytime you do any major work on your database, make a copy of it, right? Click and drag, drop, copy, whatever you got to do, okay? If you want to learn more about how to properly back up your Access database, go watch this video. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch it. Back up your database. I don't want any complaints that, oh, Rick told me to do this, and I clicked that, and I did a delete query, and all my stuff's gone. No. Back up your data. Go do it right now. While you're thinking of it, while you're watching this video, I want you to go back up your stuff right now because you know you haven't done it in six months. Go. Now, I will also tell you that I'm a fan of not deleting any data. Don't delete stuff. Anything that has business meaning, customers, orders, order details, quotations, contact history, product, anything. If it has an actual meaning for your business, don't delete it. Archive it. All right, save it. Mark it inactive. Any of that stuff. Go watch this video. I'll explain that in much more detail. Also, before we get started, I want you to know what access query criteria are. You'll need to specify criteria to be able to pick which records you want to delete in your delete query. So go watch this video if you don't know what criteria are. But now with all that being said, sometimes you will need to delete some data, usually temporary data. Like for example, when I do an email blast, right? I've got a query that runs and it gathers up, let's say I'm sending out an email to all my Microsoft Access students, right? The query, it, it, it runs some updates and some, and some app pens and it builds a nice little temporary table with all the email addresses in it. I send out the email blast. I can delete that then. That's, there's no real importance to that, right? Log data, sometimes old log data from your website or if you, if you keep an audit trail in your database, you don't need to keep that very long, maybe a year. Okay, so there are some things that you will delete, but they don't have any real business meeting after a while. Okay, so how do we actually delete this stuff? Well, we use a delete query, just like we used a select query to pick records and an append query to add records and an update query to update records. A delete query is used to delete records. Now, I'm going to pretend the data that I'm deleting isn't of any use, but I'm just going to use the tables that I have. Of course, you would not use real-world tables for this. I've got a customer table. It's got a list of my customers, and I add a bunch of new ones, right? And I've got a contact table that is basically every time you talk to a customer, that's called a contact. This is the contact history for each of these customers. Let's pretend I want to delete all of the contacts in the database that are before 2022, okay? So basically all of these ones. Now, yeah, in a simple situation like this, I could just select those and hit delete. But let's pretend you got 100,000 records in here and they're in no particular order. So that's why we would use a delete query. So go to create, query design. Now, this is going to start off just like a select query. You're going to bring in the table that you want, contact table. Okay. You're going to set up the criteria. So for example, in this case, the contact date is going to be less than uh, let's do uh, 2022 0101. And yes, I use ISO dates because I have students all over the world and an ISO date is readable by everybody, year, month, day. You want to learn more about it? There's a video. Go watch that. All right. Now, if I run this, you'll see the records. I haven't turned it into a delete query yet. These are the records that will be deleted just so you can verify. All right. Come back here. Now we're going to switch this to a delete query. When you do that, you'll see this change a little bit. It says delete where. And then you've got the criteria here, and now I can run the query. I'm going to click on it. Ready? Go. Now, nothing appears to happen because I have my system warnings off. If you watched my blank database setup with the Tech Help Free Template, you'll know that one of the things I do is I turn off warnings for action queries. All right, it's under File, and then Options, and then come down to Client Settings, and it's right here, Action Queries. I leave those off. I find them annoying. All right, but you might see a message saying, oh, we're about to delete eight different records. Are you sure you want to do that? Say yes. Okay. Now, if I go into my contact table at this point, you'll see, look at that. They're gone. They're gone. They're deleted. They're gone. If you want to get them back, you're going to have to restore from your backup because there's no way you're getting them back out of access. Okay. All right. Now, 
I'm going to restore my database because I want to do another example for you. So we're going to close this one. Save changes. No. Delete this guy. And I'll copy my backup and drop my backup here so I got all those records back. Haha. <laughs> okay. That's why you make your backups. So let's verify that those records are back. Okay. There they are. Now, delete queries are a little trickier if you want to delete based on two tables or more. For example, let's say I do want to delete all those old contacts, okay, but only for customers that are inactive. Okay, if my customer table, I've got a field in here called is active, right? And let's make a couple more people inactive. Let's say I'm inactive too. All right, so their customers inactive, which usually means they're dead or they moved out of your area. They're not customers anymore, right? So I'm going to keep the customer record, obviously, but I don't need to have their old contact history. I don't care about all their calls and stuff like that, okay? So let's run a query to delete all of the contacts that are from before 2022 and the customer is inactive. This is where, this is where these get tricky sometimes. All right, so query design. We're going to bring in customer T, and we're going to bring in contact T. Notice the join there. That's fine. Okay, if you don't know how to do joins, go watch my relationships video. Okay, relationships. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. You can click on it. These are all free videos. Okay, I'm going to pick from my customer table. I want the is active field. I'll set a criteria. Is active has to be false. I don't want active customers. Okay, then come over here, and we're going to find the contact date. Again, is going to be less than... 2022-01-01. Okay. So let's see what this is going to look like. It's still a select query. All right. These are the contacts that are going to get deleted. Now be careful because right now we're dealing with records from two different tables here, right? Customer table and the contact table. Now we're going to switch this over to a delete query. we got two criteria down there. If I try to run this query now, look what happens. It says specify the table containing the records you want to delete. This is very important. Be very careful. Hit OK. What you're going to do is you're going to bring down the star from the table you want to delete the records from. If you bring down the wrong one, you're going to delete the wrong records. You're going to delete all the customers that have contacts that are old. Don't do that. We want to bring down the star from the contact table. Notice on the delete row it says from. So we're deleting from the contact table where these two conditions are met. Are you with me? Do you get it? Kids in the back row, are you, are you listening? Okay, raise your hand if you don't get it. All right. So now, before I run this, I'm going to do a quick check just to make sure. I got 29 customers. All right. When I run this, I should still have 29 customers. Ready? And go. All right, it ran. Let's make sure. Still got 29 customers. Let's check my contacts now. And okay, all the contacts older than 2022 are gone except for customers 3 and 26. Let's make sure those are active customers. Let's see, customer 3 is active, and I'll bet 26 is active as well. Who's active? Oh, let's get Elite. Let's, and he's active as well. Okay, so it worked. See, I deleted all the custom or all, da, 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 no, correct that. I deleted all the contacts <laughs> that are older than January 2022 for customers that are inactive. See that that's the tricky part is doing is doing delete queries with two tables. If you want to learn more about delete queries, access expert level 16. All right, level 15 starts up with the action queries. I think 15 we do. Uh, yeah, we do these ones. We do append queries, some update queries. We start we start delete queries in 15. We just do the simple delete queries, but in 16 is where I spend a lot more time on delete queries with multiple tables and stuff. Referential integrity, all that kind of jazz. Of course, my lessons are designed to be followed one after the other. The tech help videos, I jump around. This one might be delete queries. The next one might be something with form properties. I don't know, whatever. All right, so whatever the questions that I get and the topics that I feel like covering that day. If you want a nice structured course where you learn this, then this, then that, in the order that you're supposed to learn them in, so it's not all confusing and jumbled, and I, I don't have to tell you, go watch this video first, then come back in this. No, that's what my course is for. You start with the beginner stuff, then you go into the expert class, level one, two, three, four, and eventually, you know more than me. And you're coding in VB, and you're, and you're writing an app that, that solves world peace. Okay. So don't forget, back up your data right now. Do it if you haven't done it already. And that is your fast tip for today. 
I hope you learned something. I'll see you again real soon. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.